I hope you like the new intro. We're up to blog number 32, so I figured I'd make this thing a, look a bit more professional and do some kind of lame intro like all the other cool blogs have. If it's any good, let me know. In case you're wondering what that board is, it's a board I designed some time ago. It's a development board. It's got a real expensive uh, top of the line Vertex 5 FPGA on it, real expensive chip. It's like $800 or something like that. And it's got uh, gigabit ethernet. It's got uh, high speed rocket IO. It's got SATA. It's got power over ethernet. And it's a really cool little board. It's quite high tech. So that got me to thinking, well, what can I do for this blog? I know, let's go low tech retro. Look what I found. My old Tandy 1000 PC. Wow, check it, ancient. Absolutely ancient. It's a 1984 vintage, I think it is. That's probably before uh, a lot of you guys were even born, before you were itching your daddy's pants. Unbelievable. Cool bit of retro machinery here. And this was my first uh, real computer that I got. Um, well, first real one that did any useful work anyway. And uh, it's a classic. It's the original Tandy 1000. It's got its serial number 5841. So it's not, you know, it's, it's one of the first sort of batches. And it's, I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to see if this thing powers up again? I haven't touched this thing in, oh, I don't know. It's got to be at least 15 years. And check it out. I'm wearing my fire is not an option t-shirt. So we're going to get this sucker to power up by hook or by crook. Hopefully it'll go first go. What are you betting? All right, here we go, the moment of truth. I had to bring it inside and hook it up to the Sony LCD because I don't have the original uh, composite monochrome monitor I have with it anymore. I tossed that out many years ago. But let's see if this sucker powers up. I've got it plugged into the composite uh, video output and that's it and it may actually go poof uh, because the power supply who knows it's just been sitting there for 15 years so here we go Ta -da! build in the suspense flick the power switch and run for my life oh no no it doesn't work oh Oh, what a loser! Unbelievable! Let's hit the, let's hit the reset button. Oh, ah, oh, massively disappointing. What a letdown! Unbelievable! All right, after that massive disappointment, I've taken the cover off, and we'll inspect this sucker later. But uh, I just want to see if everything's still in place in there, and it looks like it is. So. I don't know, let's try it again. Maybe it uh, just needed a kick in the pants. Here we go. Ta da! Woohoo! Got it! Got it! There it is! Ha <laughs> ha Ah! Copyright 1994 Tandy Corp. All rights reserved. Insert system diskette. Woohoo! We have a winner. It lives. That is just awesome. Wow, obviously the power supply just needed a little bit of a kick in the pants. But um, yeah, there it is. Bang. 128K. Actually, it should have more than that. Because um, I believe that's the extra 256K expansion board. So obviously that's not working. I'm not sure why. That's not the one I originally was using the last time I had it. Uh, I actually had a bigger board which is why I've actually cut the chassis out here. I actually had a bigger board which um, came out the front because the Tandy 1000, one of its classic problems was that it wasn't a full length PC. And almost from day one, I don't think I ever put the cover back on this thing. I always operated it with the cover off. And you can see a couple of my custom mods here. I've got a volume control, which it never had. I've got a mono, mono and color switch. It's the only Tandy 1000 in the world that actually had a turbo mode because I designed a custom turbo board for this thing. And there it is there. 
if I zoom in on it, you can see it's um, a little, an old piece of Vero board with the original uh, timing chip here. It's got a new crystal, it's got um, a couple of other chips, which I'll probably explain later, and it's designed uh, to plug into the existing socket on there, and it fits between these two boards. So the really cool thing about it is that the boards would still fit in here, and the turbo board just neatly goes in there like that. And it's got all these wire mods around, as you can see, and I, I really modified this sucker a lot. I know what you're thinking. This is an electronics engineering video blog. We can't have this episode being some geeky PC retro loving. So let's have a look at some electronics, shall we? I mentioned before that my Tandy 1000 had a turbo board, which I custom designed. And this was way back in the early days. I had the technical reference manual and it just wasn't fast enough. It only operated at 4.77 megahertz. And I, I put in a V20 processor because back then you could, uh, you could get a V20. It was a pin compatible uh, processor for the 8088. It sped up your machine, but that wasn't good enough. I wanted a turbo button. All these other machines out there had a turbo button, so I wanted my own. So I designed it. So this is how I did it. The uh, Tandy 1000 had an 8244, uh, 8245A uh, timing chip, and this was specifically designed for sending the required clock signals out to an 8088 processor. Now, I pulled over the data sheets for this thing back in the day, figuring out how I could uh, add a turbo functionality. And what I found is that it had an internal oscillator and that wasn't being used. They actually used an external oscillator and it already had an internal switch to switch between the external clock and this internal oscillator. Aha! Brilliant! Right, but then I found, I read the, more, I looked at the circuits more in depth and I found that the DMA memory processing still required a fixed 4.77 at 33% duty cycle otherwise it wouldn't work and I experimented with that and sure enough the machine crashed so I had to generate that signal regardless of the turbo mode and also the timer um, chip the uh, real-time clock actually required I think it was a real-time clock it required a 2.38 megahertz signal fixed so my turbo board had to come up with both of these signals regardless of what the actual processor clock speed was. And what did you do back in the old days? You wanted to design the most elegant, simplistic circuit you could. So I channeled my inner Woz, my inner Wozniak, and I came up with this sucker, and I thought it was very clever at the time. Well, you know, it's, it's not too bad anyway. I was only young, so, you know, I was impressed by it. And what I had was a three-stage shift register with feedback, and that was fed from the existing 14.318 megahertz clock. And sure enough, that's a divide by six. So the output gave me my fixed 2.38 megahertz I needed. Great, okay? But where did this 4.77 at, at a precisely a 33% duty cycle come from? Well, I figured out, I looked at the uh, mappings for this thing, and I figured out that this shifting clock going through here, this uh, shifting one that was shifting through here, could actually be decoded and give me my required 33% duty cycle. So I figured out that if I tapped it off with an exclusive OR gate, bang, it gave me, uh, I tapped the inner signals and it would give me this exact signal I needed. It was elegantly simplistic. It was fantastic. So that went off to a different wire and then uh, the thing had the built-in switch and you flick the switch and this was a I think I don't know a 20 megahertz crystal or something and bingo I could turn off and on the turbo mode here without affecting any of the other signals that the machine needed and I thought this was the coolest thing ever and it was one of my um, uh, first few published circuits I got published in Anyway, I thought it was pretty cool at the time. Sadly, those days of elegant simplicity in circuit design there, they're pretty much gone. There's so much waste these days. Ah. <sighs>